Let's look at some examples of how a VOR can be used. A direct track to the VOR can be flown from the present position. A specific course to or from the VOR. A different VOR can also be used to pinpoint the aircraft's location. To begin, let's go over the basics of the VOR indicator. The OBS or Omni Bearing Selector knob can be rotated to adjust the compass card when selecting a course or radial to fly. The CDI or Course Deviation Indicator will tell which direction the airplane needs to fly, left or right, always fly towards the needle. The outer edge of the circle in each dot represents two degrees to show how far off course in degrees the aircraft is from the selected course. There's also a to from indicator, and when there's no signal, an off flag or unreliable signal flag will be displayed. The horizontal needle is a glide slope deviation indicator, but that will not be used. This is what a VOR looks like. VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. VORs operate on a frequency band of 108.0 to 117.9 or 5, just above the frequency range of an FM radio. Generally, a VOR can be found on a VFR sectional surrounded by a compass rose, and that compass rose is oriented in relation to magnetic north. VORs radiate their signal in all directions from 001 to 360 degrees. These are known as radials, and a particular radial can be selected by adjusting the OBS on the VOR indicator. This method can be used to find the aircraft position from a VOR. To do this, rotate the OBS knob until the CDI centers with a from indication. The course on the top of the VOR receiver is 200, which would put the aircraft somewhere on this orange line. There is a way to pinpoint the location and we'll get to that shortly. Magnetic courses can be seen all around the compass rows in increments of 30 degrees unless another symbol needs to be displayed. If the aircraft is over here to the east, it would be on the 090 degree radial from drier VOR. This position would be the 180 degree radial, here the 300 degree radial. When the aircraft's VOR receiver has a centered needle with a from indication, that is the radial the aircraft is on. Heading has no impact on the radial or the to from flag indication. Radials are always expressed in relation from the VOR. The aircraft is now on the 270 degree radial, but let's say we wanted to fly to the VOR. The VOR receiver would show a from indication with 270 centered at the top of the instrument, but we want to fly to the VOR, which would be the exact opposite of that. The OBS would be rotated until 090 displays at the top and we would have a to indication. Once the aircraft flies past the VOR, the flag would switch to a from indication and the aircraft would then be on the 090 degree radial. Those are the basics of a VOR, now how to actually use one. The desired VOR frequency will be entered. The VOR receiver antenna here will pick up the signal transmitted by this VOR. This is drier VOR, the frequency is 113.6. The station identifier is DJB or Delta Juliet Bravo. The Morse code identifier for those letters are here. That Morse code will be used shortly to confirm the airplane is navigating to the correct VOR. And that frequency will be entered in the NAV1 radio and switched to the active frequency. To listen and verify the Morse code matches that on the sectional, turn the NAV1 volume up and select NAV1 on the audio panel. The VOR has now been positively identified. Let's start by flying to the VOR from our present position. To do this, twist the OBS until the needle centers with a 2 indication. The course at the top of the instrument needs to be flown. In this case, it's a course of 310 degrees. As the airplane rolls through a heading of 310 degrees, the needle is not centered. The needle's to the left of center, the airplane needs to be flown to the left. We need to determine an intercept heading. And to do that, we can look up here. If there is no wind and we were flying a heading of 310, we would parallel the course. If we wanted to make a huge intercept of 90 degrees, we would turn to the left to a heading of 220. But let's try something a little bit in between, a heading of about west, that's about a 45 degree intercept. Let's fly that and see what happens. The airplane's now on heading of approximately west. Let's speed this up and save a little bit of time. As that intercept heading is flown, the needle slowly moves back to the center of the instrument. When that happens, make that right turn back to, in this case, 310. In an environment with no wind, that heading of 310 would keep that needle centered. But that does not happen usually. 
and a heading other than 310 might be required to keep the needle centered. The aircraft can also be flown on a specific course to the station. In this example, let's say we want to avoid airspace or avoid flying over an ex-girlfriend's house. And to do that, the 020 course needs to be flown. 020 would be selected in the OBS and we would have a 2 indication we're flying to the VOR. And once that VOR was crossed, we would get a flag flip and a from indication. And in this position, we would be flying the 020 radial from the station. Let's put that into practice. Let's fly the 020 course to the station by twisting the OBS until 020 is in the top of the VOR receiver. Once the course is entered, the CDI is to the right, so the aircraft needs to be flown to the right. A good intercept heading in this case would be 050 degrees. Which is the intercept I will use, but at the end of this clip, you'll see that I move it over to 060 for a slightly greater intercept angle. If the needle's slow to move in, a greater intercept heading may be needed due to wind. As the needle centers, a left turn back to 020 would need to be made. Small corrections to the left or right may be needed to stay on course due to winds aloft. While the needle centered flying on the 020 course to the station, let's look at one more thing and an easy way to figure out our radial with a 2 indication without spinning the OBS knob. In a previous example, the radial was found by centering the needle with a from indication. Here, we are on the 200 degree radial. If the OBS knob is rotated back to 020 with a 2 indication and a centered needle, the radial the aircraft is on can be found simply by looking at the arrow on the bottom of the VOR receiver. Now let's look at how to pinpoint the aircraft's location. For reference, this was the first example we flew when we went present position directly to the VOR. The 310 degree course to the station is intercepted and flown. When flying on this line to the station, with one VOR, it's not easy to tell exactly where the airplane is. To do that, a second VOR can be used and pinpoint the aircraft's location. It's best to pick a VOR left or right of the airplane's position and not in front of or behind the aircraft. Here are two choices circled in orange. It doesn't matter. Let's pick the one off our right side, which would be Chardon VOR on a frequency of 112.7. First step, enter 112.7 in the standby, and then hit the switch to flip the frequency to make it in use. Here the Navigation 2 radio volume would be turned up, Nav 2 would be selected on the audio panel so we could hear the Morse code to confirm the identification of that VOR. Let's say that was successfully done, now we want to find out what radio the airplane's on in relation to Chardon VOR. So here, spin the OBS knob until we get a from indication with a centered needle. The needle is now centered. The course at the top is 220. We're on the 220 degree radial from the Chardon VOR. The green line is the 130 degree radial from Dryer. The orange line is the 220 degree radial from Chardon VOR. The point where those two lines meet is the approximate location of the aircraft. This is how the aircraft's position can be determined using just VORs, which is also one of the skills in the Private Pilot Airman Certification Standards. Another skill is being able to recognize and describe the indication of station passage, which will be demonstrated now as the aircraft approaches the VOR. The needle becomes more sensitive as the aircraft gets closer to the VOR. The CDI is showing full-scale deflection and the two flag just disappeared. There's also an off flag at the bottom of the VOR receiver. And that two flag is now a from indication. The VOR is now behind the aircraft and if we flew straight ahead and centered that needle we would be on the 310 degree radial. The VOR can also be used to fly from the station on a specific radial. The airplane just flew over the top of drier VOR, now let's fly the 270 degree radial from the station. To do that, simply twist the OBS to 270. Once that's entered, the needle's off to the left. We need to fly the airplane to the left, so we need to figure an intercept heading. That will be determined once again by looking at the VOR receiver. The aircraft is close to the station, so a large intercept angle may not be desired. When flying to the station earlier, we used a 45 degree intercept, but this time, 
we're only going to use a 30 degree intercept. Also in doing this, it's a good idea to know which direction the wind is coming from. If there's a strong wind off the left side right now, a 30 degree intercept, even though we're close to the station, may not be enough. Or if there is a strong crosswind out of the northwest off our right side, that wind would help push the aircraft on to the desired radial. From here, this heading would be held until the needle starts to center. If the needle took a long time to center, a greater intercept angle could be used. As the needle begins to center, let's take a look at one more thing that's important about VORs, and that is aircraft heading, which is actually not important. The VOR does not care what direction the airplane is going. The 270 degree radial is tuned in the VOR receiver, and one might think as the airplane turns around and heads to the east back to the VOR, that that flag may switch to a two indication, but that would be incorrect. I'll speed this up and watch what happens to the VOR receiver as the airplane makes a 360 degree turn. There's the completion of the 360 degree turn and you can clearly see the needle didn't move and the to from flag did not change. When flying to or from a VOR, the course on the VOR receiver and the aircraft's heading should be closely aligned. If they are not or opposite of each other, you can get what is called reverse sensing. The simple thing to remember when flying a VOR is always fly towards the needle, but when reverse sensing is happening, that will not be the case. We already know the aircraft is flying from drier VOR towards the west on the 270 degree radial. But the VOR receiver is showing a two indication. Also, before spinning the OBS around to 090, the course was off to the left, so that 270 degree radial was to our left to the south of the aircraft's current position. As the aircraft is turned approximately 20 degrees to the right, watch what happens to that needle. It clearly moves away from this centered position. One possible time reverse sensing could occur is when flying a Victor Airway. If flying Victor 14 from the Flag City VOR towards the Muncie VOR, 243 degrees would be set in the top of the VOR receiver. In the middle of the airway, we would switch over to Muncie VOR on 114.4. The course from Muncie to Flag City is 063 degrees. If we accidentally set 063 in the top under the index on the VOR receiver, 063 would be a from indication. But the aircraft is flying to Muncie VOR. This would cause reverse sensing. The magnetic courses shown on a Victor Airway are always radials. So if we were flying to Muncie, we would set 063 in the bottom index of the VOR, and that would show a two indication and eliminate reverse sensing. Earlier in the video, two VOR radials can be used to identify the aircraft's location. Another piece of equipment to help identify where an aircraft is in relation to a VOR is DME or distance measuring equipment. DME also shows ground speed, but ground speed is only accurate when flying directly to or from a VOR. The aircraft was flying west on the 270 degree radial and at right turn to the north, 90 degrees to the VOR is made. The DME is now sensing that the aircraft is not really getting farther or closer to the VOR, so the ground speed will get closer to zero. However, the distance is still accurate. There is a catch to the distance given on a DME. DME uses slant range. This just means due to altitude, the actual distance from the VOR might be greater than the true distance. Here's an example of that. The elevation of the VOR is 800 feet. One nautical mile rounded is approximately 6,000 feet. At 6,800 feet, we would be exactly one mile above the VOR. When the DME reads 1.0, we should cross the station. The two flag disappears and an off flag appears at exactly one DME. The FAA chart supplement will have more information on a particular VOR. This video's purpose was to show how to use a VOR. Types of VORs and service volumes were not covered. Chapter 16 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge has more information on ground-based navigation. This is a free resource online. This is not the abbreviation for Monday. This is the abbreviation for Minimum Operational Network. This simply means VORs are being phased out, but there will be a minimum network of VORs into the future. 
This will ensure aircraft without GPS can still navigate and all aircraft have a backup form of navigation in the event of a GPS failure. That's all. Thanks for watching.